Good afternoon and welcome to BizTech's ASEAN Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Stephen Innes, Chief Global Market Strategist at Axie. Hi, Steve. Great to Hi. have you again on the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. Great to be here. Now, let's take a quick look at markets and see how the markets around the region are performing. We'll start with the Nikkei. It's up uh, sharply and just hold on. Let me just get back. And we go down to, yes, the Nikkei, which is up. 1.4% to 28,637.38. The Shanghai Composite is largely unchanged at 3,596.1. The Hang Seng is at, it's up a whopping 3.06% at 29,746.17. The ASX 200 is up 1.13% at 6,738. The Kospi is up 2.72%. Uh, at 3,095.84. Moving over closer to home, Bursa Malaysia is now trading at 1,612.3. It's up 0.17%. And rounding it off, you've got the SGX, which is up 0.46% at 3,004.17. Steve, markets are bullish across the reason. What's the reason for that? You know, it's just a number of factors. You know, we have the uh, ongoing um, monetary and fiscal policy backstops from the U.S. The markets continue to like the idea of vaccines, although they're rolling out slowly. The eventuality is, is that those green lights are going to flash at the end of the COVID tunnel. But I think today, um, given the proximity of the inauguration, we're starting to see investors vote with their buy button, suggesting that they kind of like this uh, new Biden administration. And why not? Looks like all sorts of foreign policy and uh, and economic uh, leaders uh, in the U.S. are more than willing uh, to work with this uh, new administration, which is very very positive. And I think what we're seeing uh, getting reflected in markets today is that sentiment where investors really feel confident that we're going to have a detente in geopolitical risk and looking at the markets over here in Asia, looks like uh, there's no Hong Kong fui going on because uh, mainline Chinese investors are just eating up Hong Kong shares today. Uh, and anticipating, I could imagine, given the fact that foreign investors use Hong Kong as a proxy for China, that Hong Kong, that foreign investors are going to start jumping aggressively into Hong Kong shares. And, and this is just a glorious thing right now. And markets continue to uh, trade very favorably, which I'm quite happy to see because uh, you know it's good when investors make money. Well, tell us then, Steve, where do you see value in regional markets so that we as investors can make money? We're always looking for lemons to make uh, lemonade, and that's for sure. And I think where we're seeing, uh, besides you know the big ticket items of the IPOs and whatever that uh, tech IPOs and whatever that tend to get oversubscribed anywhere, I think we're looking at the uh, reopening trades again, where um, around travel, for instance, um, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but hey, they're coming back good again. And I think this is again reflective of the fact that people do see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So I think to a large degree, um, these servicing sector industries that have remained under the COVID cost uh, quite considerably this year are starting to light up again. And I think this is what the investors are, are seeing. Look, we've had to force be forced back down into lockdowns. Again, lockdowns are a short duration. They tend to temper the curve, but ultimately investors realize that these vaccines are coming and that's going to be a good thing for markets going forward. Now, what's your view on oil markets given the cooling sentiment from last week? Now, couple that with swelling production inventories and the return of COVID in China. Now that obviously is putting a potential dampener on demand. Uh, yeah. for oil. 100%, it really is. Um, you know, it's just it's just sort of watered down or wilted um, the reflationary dynamics around oil. But I think it's a temporary uh, issue. I think it's more of a technical correction. Look, I think oil prices can remain elevated provided the macro uh, backdrop is suitable. 
Um, in the US, for instance, we had some less than exciting retail sales numbers. Likewise, in China, although the China data was good, the retail sales numbers weren't good. And this is a problem because um, when you don't have the retail buying, there's less demand at the pump in theory, when you think about it. And with China recovering quite considerably, but the retail lagging, this doesn't necessarily uh, enamor foreign investors uh, to look uh, at the positive uh, retail pickup and retail sales globally. So this is worrying right now. Now, what events and uh, uh, news flow are you looking for that may move markets during this week? Well, the markets are looking at Yellen. I just think she's just going to go, go through the cursory uh, cursory responses uh, and her confirmation. The Senate majority will just basically rubber stamp her through. I don't think that's a big market moving thing. Uh, the Feds are, are in uh, blackout mode. So therefore, in theory, US economic data should do the talking. So all the economic data coming out will be rather significant. However, my view and my continual view here is going to be the speed of the vaccine rollouts, how that evolves. Look at Biden's promised 100 million vaccines and 100 vaccinations in the first 100 days. Will we get a million the first day? Well, that'll be a good sign if we do. If we don't, <laughs> the markets will start backpedaling on that notion. So I'm watching the uh, watching the vaccine rollouts quite closely. Now, Steve, thank you very much for your insights. So we've been speaking to Stephen Innes, Chief Global Market Strategist at Axie on Biztex. Midday ASEAN Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out www.bistech.asia for business and technology conversations.